Hey everybody, it's Pete. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to a new episode of today's Best Stock Picks. It is Wednesday morning, August 4th, 2021. We have a lot to talk about today. What a wacky market, especially if you're on the day trading side of buying stocks. Yesterday, it looked like the market after Tuesday's close, looked like we're going to finally have a little bit of a pullback, give the market a little bit of a breath, which is healthy for the market. Getting a pullback is really get some better opportunities to swing trade. You don't feel like you're playing musical chairs, but it just keeps going up and up and up and you feel like you're going to be the last person to buy. So pulling back, we're actually hoping for yesterday to be a one more down day, setting up some really new, awesome swing trades. Uh, but the market was having nothing to do with it. I'll give you the perfect example in AMD stock. We're going to walk through exactly what happened. The price levels you need to know as an active trader, especially as a day trader or a swing trader, and how AMD hit that level and caught you. <laughs> that was it. If you weren't prepared, that's the big thing. So we have a lot to cover right now. We're actually going to start out with the sector rotation. We're going to talk about two sectors in particular, one that's really strong right now and one that is kind of turning the corner that might be opportunity but isn't yet. That's the difference between a tracking journal and a trading game plan. Trading game plan are those are the stocks you're looking to trade today. A tracking journal are, wow, that's interesting, but not yet. And we put those into that tracking journal and we set alerts so that if certain price action happens, then they become trades that go from the tracking journal into the trading journal. I'm jazzed up. I've only had one cup of coffee <laughs> and it's really early in the morning. There's going to be a lot to do today. The one little thing that we got to pay attention to is I'm going to show you what's going on in the SPY ETF today and how I am going to use what I'm about to show you to determine whether I should size up, get bigger, hold longer, or trade what we might call momentum because that's all that's available right now. Stick around. I'll be back in just one second. I'm really jazzed up for today's call. Okay, so again, everything that we do is for educational purposes. This is my actual game plan heading into the day. You need to make your own financial decision. So everything that you do, everything you watch in here, you need to ultimately make the decision if what we're talking about today is perfect for you. So we're going to start out by looking at the sector rotation, and we're going to talk about basic materials, which we've been mentioning for a while now, coming off the mat. Healthcare stocks continuing to remain strong, and actually this is an important thing to think about. We're reading about the pandemic. We're reading about what's going on in the market, in the world, actually, every single day. You should be reading headlines differently. You should be reading headlines saying, is there a trade there? If I'm reading about the pandemic, if I'm reading about the infrastructure bill, which stocks make sense for me to start watching? And do they have order flow yet? Has the smart money started to step in? So now we're going to talk about basic material stocks starting to perk up. Healthcare and the pandemic, technology always in play. The energy sector is one that we're going to talk about that is not quite there yet, but going into the tracking journal, which means we're going to hop on over into the charts right now. First, we're going to start out with the SPY. And if we look at what the SPY did over the last two days, this is the sell-off that we had on Monday. Here's Tuesday. And again, if you're watching significant levels, you need to know the previous day's high, the previous day's low. That's the previous day's low in the SPY here on Monday, and here's the price action we got on Tuesday. So what does that mean? How does that translate? Essentially, it comes down to this. You need to be paying attention to yesterday's high, yesterday's low, and knowing exactly what should happen at that level. Think about it if you're a swing trader. Where are you placing your orders? If you have a full-time job, you're going, and you say, I want to buy this stock at X price. 90% of people who are swing traders place them at the previous day's high, the previous day's low. You as a smart, and just below or just above those levels, you as a smart trader need to know if it gets down to that level and follows through, what do you plan on doing? If it gets down to that level in a bullish environment and comes back up, what we call snaps back up, then what do you do? That's an amazing opportunity. And that's actually what happened here in the SPY yesterday. You can see that we broke through, went down to the downside, and then they're like, nope, smart money is like, no, we're not ready to go down yet. And it turned into the afternoon being just the most amazing opportunity for day traders. And we actually talked about AMD in that same criteria. We watched the opening price in AMD. The opening price is one of the most important things to watch. You can see here AMD shot out of the gate. And to give you some context of what AMD is doing right now, if you happen to not be watching it, this is AMD, which we've been trading very actively uh, on our headset, talking about it every single day. That's where it's been. Yesterday's price action, again, I'm teaching you a lesson right now to really be on top of your game. 
This breakdown here is nothing more than a little bit of profit taking. You're not looking to sell short. The stock is strong as a beast right now. You're looking for reasons for buyers to step back up and say, okay, done, profit taking over. I still want more of the stock. So if you could think about what we're doing, we are not guessing. We are saying the smart money is doing something. And until I see that change, I'm going to continue to piggyback on what they're already doing because the smart money, the deep pockets, the reason stocks move up and down, in this case, stocks moving higher, AMD specifically, they have a reason to be paying higher prices. It's our job until we see them not paying higher prices. It's our job to continue to piggyback on what they're doing. AMD took out the lows from the previous day, excuse me, took out the opening price. So this is where it traded up to, pulled back. And generally speaking, again, like we said, the high and the low where a lot of stop losses are, you need to be aware of this, recognize reading the tape, what happens after that, Buyers step back in immediately, and we were all over this, went down, stopped, reversed, and then this is what happened after that. This is what separates the amateurs from the professionals. You're literally thinking about this through the entire process. It's just one of the most amazing feelings in the world when you put these pieces together and it's no longer guessing. It's like, okay, this is the opening price for Monday. This is the opening price for August, uh, the first day of August trading this month. Here's the opening price for today. Here's the opening price for the hour. Here's the low of the day. Here's the high of the day. And now you're building an argument for the idea. The better you get at building that argument and saying, I want to buy this stock because of this, because of this, because of this, because of this, there's a really good chance it's going to continue. And if it doesn't, I'm okay with the downside because the upside looks pretty darn good. That's what it means to be a trader. And if you want to work with me for the next 30 days, click the link below. We just added some ridiculous bonuses to getting involved with our 30-day bootcamp. This is just a tiny fraction. I'm just showing you the ideas. We get into the where I give you the exact entries and exits all day, every day. Uh, and our, we have the most amazing community as well. Just really, really people that I'm grateful to be around every day. What we're showing you here is what to look at, how to actually take money out of the market. That's the next step, which is why you need to click down below and learn about what we do. So now we're going to move over. We're going to talk about the market specifically, and we're talking about the spy and how I'm handling what's going on. So there's a bigger picture play going on here, which is this. Okay, if we're watching the spy right now, this is the $5 window that I'm watching. It's basically trading between 436 and 441. $5 window. We got close to all-time highs yesterday after that vicious move back to the upside. You can see we're down a little bit this morning. So what does that mean? How does that translate? What does that actually mean? So right now, if we're looking at the bigger picture, we just gave you basic materials. We just gave you um, healthcare stocks. We talked a little bit about energy stocks. But what about the market? If you remember the stock market power pyramid, there's the market. And then above that is sectors, industry groups, and stocks. So we're now going back to the bottom of the pyramid looking at the market. I'm in momentum mode on most of my trades right now, which means I'm getting out into momentum. And until this changes, until the spy that pushed up and paused breaks out to the upside again, with what we call an energy candlestick, large green candlestick with volume and closes near the high. Again, super simple once you know what to look at. Once that happens, then we can expand the profit potential that we're looking for. But right now we're kind of banging our head back and forth because it's going up, it's going down. We have what we call yesterday bearish U-turns on Monday, which implies downside, followed by bullish U-turns on Tuesday. You know what I'm talking about. If you're actively trading right now, especially day trading, you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Looks like it's falling out of bed. And then just like that, it comes right back. You got to really be on top of your risk and the right profits in this kind of market right now. And right now the market's kind of banging back and forth. So we're a little bit more in momentum mode. So I want to shift on over again and just take a look at this. We talked about basic materials and we're going to talk about basic materials and energy stocks and the difference between stocks and the game plan now versus stocks that could be in the game plan that go into the tracking journal. So sticking with some of the basic material stocks, we're going to just look at some of the ones that we've been actively calling out, such as NUE, STLD, just to give you some ideas. And NUE obviously is a better idea because it's already got room to go. Uh, full disclosure, we actually did have a trade in a, uh, NUE, which just drove us crazy because we had, I think it was like a $6 profit at one point fully looking to, th to hold the thing, expand it up, and then traded at this giant bearish U-turn. We booked a profit, almost $3 on the trade, but then yesterday the thing just took out the lows and came right back. Uh, 
I do it the same trade every single time. Nobody's going to get it perfect. We made a profit on the trade. Now, we're, like a good trader does, you stick with the good stock that's working. You don't take it personal. You get back in there and you look for another entry. So NUE, and we're going to talk about AA in a second. STLD meets the criteria, but not as clear because it needs to clear the most recent level, which I'm going to show you right now, which is actually, let me find my mouse. I lost it. <laughs> right here, it's got to clear this level. So if you could take a visual, this is the right sector. It needs to clear this level, and you can see the difference between that and NUE. Okay, NUE was the breakout here, and we're looking at up to here maybe. So NUE here was the breakout. This is actually where we took the trade as soon as it cleared this level. Had room to go. Now we still like the trade, but now it's coming into resistance, so not the same trade it was about a week ago. Alcoa, very, very similar. And this is actually probably the perfect example we could see a bearish U-turn, which implies a move to the downside, followed by a bullish U-turn back in the opposite direction, like whack-a-mole in the last couple of days, but it's the right sector. So those are the top three that we're looking over there. Now I want to talk about a different sector that's not trading perfectly right now, which is what we talked about in the energy sector. However, some stocks are lining up for potential. So what we've seen here, clearly bearish order flow, right? Clearly the XLE and some of the energy stocks have been getting hit. There is not bullish order flow. But, and again, this is what separates you from the average trader to somebody who's ready. The stocks aren't ready yet. The coffee hasn't percolated yet, but it's on the stove. These are in my tracking journal now because I'm seeing price action and I'm seeing price action confirmed by volume for potential new trades where they might be bottoming out. If they do and we read the tape and get that signal, we'll start to trade them. These are ideas that I want to show you. This is how you separate yourself from, oh, I missed it. So yeah, I had it. It was just a question of timing. And this is what we're going to show you now. So XLE, clearly in a downtrend, but we're going to take a look at a few energy stocks that are perking up. We have a three-week rally, big energy yesterday, big price action opening a little bit lower. So again, not trades yet. They're going into the list. MPC, same thing. You can see bigger price action, earnings coming out. Fang, okay? Diamondback Energy, not bullish yet. Still has this downtrend, but look at that. Somebody stepping up and starting to pay higher prices, okay? Somebody, does it matter who? No, it doesn't matter who. We don't care who is doing the buying. We only care that we spot smart money. We only spot the reasons why stocks are moving up and down is because somebody with really deep pockets, a big research team says, I think this is going higher. So now it's time for us to step up, start paying higher prices before it happens. So we start to put volume in there. Again, deep pockets, hedge fund, banks, doesn't matter who it is. Once you start to spot somebody doing something like that, from one hour to the next, from one day to the next, from one week to the next, like, oh my gosh, these guys have been paying higher prices for three days in a row with big volume. Something is going on here. You start to build your tracking journal. You start to build your trading plan. And that's where you're on top of trades. And you don't look back and like, oh man, this stock ran without me. No, this is the game planning that I teach every day in the boot camp. You have to do this. I give you my video every single night on top of the stocks where I say, here's where I'm looking at it. Here's when I'm looking at it. Here's which stocks we're trading tomorrow. Here's which stocks are in the tracking journal, like the energy stocks right now. Two technology stocks that I want to point out right now that kind of perked up a little bit yesterday, not really out of the zone yet. We're going to talk about Apple, which again, you can see earnings came out. The stock really hasn't done anything very similar to the bigger picture in the market. This is the right price. Now, this is a big thing too. Understanding the right type of profit targets in the right kind of environment. Apple's stuck in a range right now. The market's stuck in a range right now. So that's more momentum type where it moves in your favor. You either start a small position looking to add if it gets out of this window. Again, smart money paying higher prices or you're just trading within that window for a one or two day trade for cash flow. So Apple is in that window right now. So it's more of a cash flow trade. Oracle, which was in a tight window for five or six days, broke out yesterday. I want to see, is it going to be more than just one day of price action? One last one that I want to leave you with. Uh, we talked briefly before about healthcare stocks. So we're going to take a look at Moderna, which obviously stepped up again. You can see earnings come up this week. And we want to talk about Lilly. Both of those stocks trading very, very well. NVAX kind of dragging behind the scenes and Pfizer kind of dragging, right? 
uh, excuse me, not Pfizer Drake. Pfizer actually joining Lilly and Moderna. So you can get a feel right now for the pandemic stocks, which ones, as we said before, are performing well. And Pfizer actually now trading much, much better than it has. You can see here for about six months, it wasn't doing anything. So there's a lot to watch today. This is, this is um, <laughs> you can probably see the bags, <laughs> see the bags under my eyes right now. There's a lot going on. You really need to be on top of your game right now. Uh, if, it's, if the market's, conf I didn't say it was confusing. I said, it's a lot to watch. If the market's confusing you right now, if it's overwhelming you right now, just click the link below, learn about what we do in the bootcamp. If it's for you, if you have a burning desire to participate in an amazing community and you want to get on track, click the link, at least learn about it. I hope to see you on the other side because we have the greatest people in the world that we work with every day. Uh, if not, you can share this on uh, YouTube with me, but we're not going to get into the minutia of exactly what to do. So there's a lot going on today. The one big suggestion that I am taking myself and that I'm talking to everybody in our community is when you recognize the kind of market that you're in, you need to trade the, the appropriate position sizing. Because if you don't recognize the market in the trading range, if you don't recognize sector rotation and you're trading last week's idea, but it's not valid anymore today, you might have the wrong position size and your losses might be bigger than necessary because you didn't adjust it up or down. The same thing happens on the other side when you have something obvious like AMD and digging deeper into that technology sector, those are the opportunities where you should have a little bit more because the opportunity is better and the volume, I, I take a quick look, we'll take a look at this if we look at AMD and I'll show you what I mean. You take a look at AMD and you start to look at the volume, could it be any more obvious that somebody with deep pockets is saying, oh my gosh, let's get involved in this thing? Now again, this is the, this is five days later, so keep that in context. If you had your tracking journal and you had it set up the way we did, you were watching this five days ago. It's a little bit late now to put on a new swing trade. It's still active, we're still involved, but this is the point of understanding how to create a game plan. You have all of this done well before this happens because you're doing it every single day. You're going on a treasure hunt every single day, setting it up, and then you understand the trade expectation, you understand the order flow, you understand the right profit potential, and then that leads to the right profit target and the right position sizing. Look, if you just want to be a chart reader, just look at signals and look for patterns, and you probably won't make money. If you want to be a trader, you have to consider those things because some deals are great, some deals are okay, and you have to have the right position and right profit potential for the amount of money you're willing to put into that opportunity. So I'm jazzed up. we got a lot going on today, so I can't wait for the market to open in a few hours. I hope to see you on the other side of the boot camp. If you want to just learn about it, click down and see if it's for you. If not, either way, I want you to know how much I appreciate that you're with me today. Click down, subscribe, hit the alert button, leave me a comment, let me know, and smash that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Have an awesome day, everybody.